so I'm editing right now and just realized why did it not cross my mind? Where is Constance Winston Pickering? <laughs> yes, I just made Constance's middle name Winston. Where is she? Constance, where you at, girl? Welcome back to Wizard PhD, it's Professor Lynette, and this is the dialogue overview and all of that for our first April Brilliant event, Burrow Besiege, where we have a focus on Mr. Ronald Billius Weasley. <laughs> so like the last Brilliant event, Port Key, Brilliant Port Keys are going to be at one and a half kilometers. Uh, that seems, based on the tasks that I've looked at from Wizards Unite Hub, that seems to be the holdup for me for this week. But I'm going to be live on Twitch, so this video is actually going to be posted after. If you saw the live stream, yay, we had some fun. Um, if you want to have something listening to in the background and you want to hear me <laughs> talk about Wizards Unite and uh, conspiracies about Constance, what do you think about Constance Pickering? Your options are totally normal girl, not a girl, she is the calamity, she is another person, or my favorite character, or whatever pops up during the Brilliant event, then be sure to check out the replay. Uh, you can go to my channel at twitch.tv slash wizardphd, but I'm excited to analyze what is going to be said to us during this Brilliant event, and let's, let's just get into it. Okay, let's get started with this Brilliant event. Run. <laughs> Harry, what did you do? Oh, aggressive, aggressive. Mom says there's a crowd of witches and wizards hanging around the burrow. All oh, snap, all oh, snap. Also, he is the proprietor of Weasley's Wizarding Oasis, which will be our new port key location. Harry, what? Why do you think I did anything? Classic Harry Ron situation. Just getting mad at each other. All oh, snap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey Steph, hey Laura, how's it going? No one draws a crowd like you, mate. Did you give an interview or something? Yeah, Rita Skeeter. Rita Skeeter bugged your house. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it's the trio, all three of us. No, he didn't. The burrow was just featured in the travel guide, 100 historical sites from the second Wizarding War. What? What? <laughs> 100 historical sites? Oh, we, we gotta make a list of this. Those witches and wizards are tourists, Ron. Oh, that sucks, dude. <laughs> the burrow is now a historical site. What? I was not expecting this at all. Oh, mom is not gonna like that. Oh, Malfoy Manor for sure is on the list. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Harry, I'm more worried about how the Calamity is going to respond to all those people thinking about the burrow. Here we are again with uh, this idea. Hey, Lady Brit, what's up? <laughs> Malfoy Manor is the only one you have to pay to go to, I bet. And it's going to uh, support the Malfoy Trust Fund or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, we have the idea that the Calamity is responding to our freaking thoughts. What? What? <laughs> I mean, this was mentioned before, and it seems to be, like, aligned with the Brilliant event of, like, their seasonal and everything. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Ron, what have you gotten yourself into? Oh. We're also gonna get a brimstone. Ron, I sent Dad a load of decoy detonators to scare off those tourists. But all they managed to do was startle the chickens. <gasps> Fire-breathing chickens? Just kidding. Dad's covered in feathers and has been pecked half to death. Ron! <laughs> Dude, poor Arthur. But mom says that does not excuse him from helping out returning foundables. Molly Weasley is intense. <laughs> that is hilarious. All right, we have Ron. Poor mom and dad keep seeing my foundable lurking around and thinking I've come home for a visit. Oh my god, poor, poor the poor Weasleys. Oh, it is Amy. Hey, what's up? 
Like, I'd go anywhere near the burrow right now. Oh, rude. <laughs> Dude. Ron, it's your family. You have to help them out. <laughs> oh, Ron. What a child. Tourists everywhere, and now Weasley Foundables too? It sounds like a madhouse. More mad than usual, I mean. <laughs> Ron's just like, yeah, I'm staying clear away. I'm just gonna go hide out. In the ministry? I don't know. Oh, we have one thing to place. Let's look at this. List dialogue. This is his uh, copy. It feels like just yesterday that mom was telling me to pick up the comics littering my bedroom floor. Now here I am cleaning up their foundables. Oh, rough. Uh, so this actually, the comic book, it, okay. I think this is the Martin Miggs one, right? The Adventures of Martin Miggs. So this is also a challenge foundable, but this says bronze comic book as the entry. Uh, revolves around a hapless French muggle and his misadventures in the non-magical world. We are on the bonus page, finally. I, uh, Jeff and I, I don't know if y'all saw, but Wendy's was streaming earlier, and so it worked. I was like, I want Wendy's. <laughs> so we got Wendy's, drove around. I literally only saw one high and it ran from me. Luckily, there are three-headed dogs out, so I was able to finally finish page four. But look at this. Okay, earn 7,500 wizarding XP, return 30 brilliance, return five high foundables, use tonic three times, you're getting rid of my tonics, and return one severe foundable. So, I don't know, while we're doing this, uh, we have some dialogue and port keys. I'm just gonna put on a trace tonic because I have to use three of them anyway. The Weasley is our king banner. Oh, puppy's coming. Did I ever tell you I was keeper for the Gryffindor team? Called me their king, they did. They sang a song about me. How did it go again? Oh my God, Ron. What did he say? Oh, my knee. If your mom knew that you were reminiscing about your Quidditch days while her garden is being overrun by tourists and foundables of your old rubbish. And gnomes. <laughs> Ron goes, no, that's how... Oh, I think it's supposed to say, that's not how the song went at all. I think there's a typo in this. That's, that's how it went. That's not how the song, oh, Ron, you're gonna get in trouble later. Oh, <laughs> it's chaos in this house. Everyone's running around <laughs> <laughs> trying to record a video here <laughs> for the people. No, okay. Um, <laughs> ah, puppy bam! Oh yeah, I should put on AR plus mode so that we can see what that's about for this new location. Oh, a horned serpent egg. Yes, I need, I need 75 more. The moment of truth, is it gonna be Picket? Oh, I should have had my Rufio's on. Oh. Dark arts, no, no. Can I take it back? No. Oh, I do need Bitterroot though. It is a swooping evil. I take it back, I do want the swooping evil. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. But look at these. You know Pooh, which we've seen as other fortress foundables. The ceiling, oh, there we go. I was like, the ceiling is not too interesting. But yeah, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, they have, you can walk in here and it's pretty, pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Look at these. All right, since you're right here, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, look at this, so cute. <laughs> oh. oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get out of here. The decoy detonators. Oh, look at all these. More decoy detonators. Oh, okay, so now we have the ceiling. We have some stuff we can see. Oh, the sun, the sun is shining. Look how cute all of this is. Oh no, no, I, I wandered, I wandered too far. Hello, I am finally ready for the rest of this dialogue. The real pig 
is probably enthusiastically helping mom deliver howlers to the publisher of a certain travel guide right about now. Oh, can you imagine Molly Weasley's just screaming at everyone right now? How dare you? <laughs> Well, oh gosh, the travel guide. The travel guide that drew all the attention to the borough with this brilliant, brilliant event that's happening. Okay, the chess set. Mom says that a few less savory tourists are searching the borough grounds for artifacts of historical value. Anything they can sell, more like, wow, y'all, calm down, Wizarding World. If they knew that Harry and I used to play with that wizard chess set together, they'd probably try and steal that foundable too. Y'all, lay off the Weasley family. People trying to make money off them, yo. So I had to go back to uh, when I was streaming, like my reaction, like what that dialogue was. So the very beginning, we have this suggestion. We have our trio, first of all. We have this suggestion that, okay, there's all of these witches and wizards at the borough because of this published travel guide. And is it a coincidence that the Calamity is focusing on the borough for the brilliant event? Now before, I have speculated about whether or not these brilliant foundables are the same as our other foundables because, you know, the animation is the same, it looks the same. However, if you notice from the previous weeks or even from this week that the foundable itself is like in this purple aura, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. I feel like it means something. So if the calamity is uh, dictated by our attention, maybe that's kind of like, oh, we have these special like brilliant foundables that are different because they are provoked by our collective attention somehow to draw out these memories and put them out into the world, maybe. I also find it hilarious that Ron immediately, he's like blaming Harry and Harry's like, I didn't do anything, why do you say that? And he's like, no one draws a crowd like you, mate. Oh gosh, you holding on to something there, Ron? You have something to say about your longtime friendship with Harry and his, uh, his fame? <laughs> we have other suggestions about how the Calamity works from previous events. Going way, way, way back, this is before our characters had little titles next to their name, so this just says Constance Pickering, it doesn't say Junior Undersecretary, but she's explaining the Calamity, it steals memories, and in some cases, manifests things from the past. Everyone here at the Ministry who has had a memory taken, Harry Potter, Hermione, it's like, people at the Ministry are being targeted. Now, it has been, uh, posed to me by Aura Jeffrey and some of y'all that watch these videos that possibly the trace could be part of this larger foundable spell or even whatever whatever spell was like ultimately cast or multiple spells we're not sure uh, having the trace be part of it like it could be that the trace was placed on people who work at the ministry like does that fit for all the events that we've seen so far that we're focusing on them? Are we focusing on the attention, like the attention of them? So maybe it's not necessarily the attention of us per se, because like if we're thinking about something, our trio is likely also thinking the same thing, like we're thinking about the burrow and all of that. I don't know. This screenshot I'm about to share is from June 29th, 2019. That's like nine days after the game launched. This is from like the SOS assignments, the dialogue that pops up. So if you don't have a screenshot of it, uh, I haven't found a way to replay it. So if you have screenshots of those SOS assignment dialogues, I think it's also crucial to the plot. Hermione, as you know, I tend to believe that the Calamity reads us sort of like the room of requirement at Hogwarts. If that were true, it would open up all kinds of possibilities. Can we manipulate the Calamity? So hence like this idea of like, okay, the Calamity somehow reads us or interacts with us. Harry in this beginning is thinking about, oh, how, if people are thinking about things, um, then it's gonna affect the Calamity. And then she says, or worse, could someone else, could someone else manipulate the Calamity? Which I find very important for thinking about some of these brilliant events and how we're speculating how they're coming about. All right, this screenshot is from July 16th, so about a month since uh, the game launched. This is, yeah, this is the July Brilliant event. So Harry says, Hermione, I've been deluged with owls from friends saying they've been returning lots of foundables related to me 
and uh, he says, perhaps by being in the public eye, I'm more subject to the whims of the calamity. So again, like this is, for me, this was like the first suggestion that the calamity was dynamic and uh, responsive to our thinking or our talking or something to do with what we're saying and thinking and doing. Hermione, well, there was that Daily Prophet feature about your work with the Statute of Secrecy Task Force. Perhaps that's drawn the attention of the calamity somehow. That may confirm a theory I've had that if enough people focus on something, it could affect how the calamity behaves. So going back to her earlier fear that what if, and it could be intentional, it could be unintentional of, you know, the Daily Prophet is the largest source of news in the wizarding world. Like, the most people read the Daily Prophet. So an institution with that sort of reach and power could be intentional, could be not. It could be that some people working at the Daily Prophet um, have also picked up on this pattern is like, hey, I wonder if we can capitalize off this. I mean, it's called the Daily Prophet for goodness sake. I don't know what they're profiting off of by having the calamity focus on the borough, but, or actually on Harry. It really makes me think a lot about <laughs> like how our digital technologies, social media, like the basically attention is the currency. And this is something that I have been like thinking about in my own like research as a professor and uh, working in higher education. And so it's very fascinating to me and also as a content creator for goodness sakes, like it's fascinating to me to think about attention as like a means of capital and like how that's distributed, how people seek it out, how like, but then, so there's like intended purposes and then there's unintended consequences. So you already have the technology or the system or whatever that exists. And the more that people understand it, you might have people use it for different purposes or reasons or aims. And so that's kind of like where all of this is making me think, I, I don't know. I know it's confirmation bias. However, I keep going to like this modern day wizarding world story connected with a uh, possibly modern day dynamics of our current society. And so it just, I can't help but like make parallels between like the metaphorical connections of the calamity and how we exist in digital spaces with each other. Like, I don't know, there's like the things about memory, like never being allowed to forget, like, cause you have the collection of everything. Everyone has receipts. Everyone has like the history of everything that's ever been said ever. <laughs> I don't know. It's just interesting, like from the perspective, like a philosophical perspective as a human trying to exist in a world where you are never allowed to forget is, to me like where my mind always goes with the calamity why it's so like it is truly like terrifying um from if you're like making that parallel i'm really excited be at the closer we get to the one year mark because my hope is that near the one year mark we're gonna get you know what's the next what's the next year what's the next layer what's the next reveal what's the next stage in this development like we have the calamity we've been dealing with it we've been doing some research with these events our trio is kind of like speculating some things i don't know i'm still like on the board of like my my wild conspiracy about the london five is that there was this whistleblower operation happening people inside the ministry also working with maybe a daily profit reporter or something to expose something and somehow like that mission got collided with or manipulated with this other thing where possibly Grimm cr caused the calamity. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's a group of people, an underground society. I'm just word vomiting all the thought, like all the big theories that I've had in my mind about this game. <laughs> and I, pro and probably like you, are just spinning around in circles because I'm just like, I need, there's, there's something that um, needs to direct my attention, strangely enough. Like, scatterbrain all over the place. This is, this is how I feel. The question then for me is, wait, did the battle of Hogwarts happen in May? May 2nd, 1998. Do you think that the next brilliant event for the month of May is gonna focus on this battle? 
We've been getting closer with like the second Wizarding War. Now we have this like hundred monument thing or historical sites, travel guide, whatever. Voldemort is back. He's returning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because again, speaking to like other people trying to manipulate, like what if there was like a manipulated force, kind of like, I don't know, I guess a way I could liken it is like bots, right? So you have like bots <laughs> that are witches and wizards or whatever stationed out in the world and like actively like folk or manipulating attention toward Voldemort, for example, and then you just have Voldemort all over the place. <laughs> because that's how the calamity works. Okay, I gotta stop. I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling out of control. That's all. I don't know. <laughs> that's all that I have for you because I feel like I didn't actually get to any sort of conclusion. It was just a bunch of like, let's go revisit all of the things that I've thought and questioned and let's just keep going with it. So let me know in the comments below what you think about Burrow Besieged Part 1, this dialogue, if anything stood out to you, particularly if it was connected to any previous dialogue from SOS assignments or from our mysteries or from anything. If you made a connection, you're like, hey, we should go down this train of thought. I would love to know all of that as well. And until next time, Wands Ready.